Well, good afternoon, Jamf Nation. How are you guys doing today? All right. You guys are here for the session on how to set up your Traeger grill at home, right? Okay, good, good. Right session. No, uh, set up your Mac racing stripes with uh, Dan Snelson and Leslie Hallou. Before we get started, before I hand it over to them, real quick housekeeping note on question and answer, the Q&A session. Uh, this year in, in, uh, at JNUC here in Austin, we are doing Q&A through the app. So if you want to take out the, your phones, your tablets, whatever, open the JNUC app. Go onto the burger stack, you'll see session Q&A. Find this session, and that's how you'll be able to submit uh, questions and answers. And those of you joining us virtually, you're also able to participate right there on the session page. Those uh, Q&As, those questions will get uh, uh, collected. You can vote on them. And at the end, I'll come back up and we'll go through the, some of the top questions and answers. So you're not here to listen to me babble on, so let me turn it over to Dan and Leslie. All right, you're coming up with me? Sure. Go get the guy. You first. Oh, I don't have my little clicker. Uh -oh. Steve, did you walk off with the clicker? Or Steve's going to go grab one. <sighs> We're going to click, Kelly. Hello, Austin. It is... It is fantastic to see all of you here. Thank you, Steve. Steve Wood, everybody. If you don't know who Steve is, we are lucky to have Steve as our SE at the church. So uh, we're, we're grateful everybody is here. We're thankful for the virtual audience. Uh, as Steve mentioned, you would do Q&A through the app. Uh, my name is Dan Snelson, and I am a senior system engineer with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. We are frequently called Mormons because we believe in a volume of companion scripture to the Holy Bible called the Book of Mormon. This is you. This is me. I'm Leslie Hallou. work at Jamf, uh, consulting slash implementation engineer, and... Uh, that's about it. And how many apps have you written? So I, yeah, I've done a few apps you may have seen before. You may have seen before. That's right. Okay. Well, here's our agenda. I'll start by providing an overview of both Swift Dialog and Set Up Your Mac. And then we'll discuss some possible racing stripes and gotchas. And then I'll turn it over to Leslie. And then we'll do uh, some Q&A. So, let's level set with a couple of overviews. First, none of this would be possible without BART and Swift Dialogue. <laughs> BART Reardon has provided the Mac Admins community Swift Dialogue. It's an open source utility written in Swift UI that uh, requires macOS Monterey 12 or later that displays a pop-up dialogue which includes content-rich messages for your end users. While Bart is fond of saying that Swift Dialog itself has no brains, Swift Dialog can return various values from user input on which your script can act and further process. So the project is available on GitHub, and BART has an extensive wiki with detailed examples. Additionally, there's built-in help when you need a quick answer. And this is a QR code from BART session from last year. Here's a demo of Set Up Your Mac being executed via self-service, which we call the Workforce App Store. While we prompt users to initiate Set Up Your Mac via self-service, there's a racing stripe coming up if you want to start Set Up Your Mac straight when they log in to the computer. And thanks to multiple Mac admin community members, customizing which fields initially display is easier than ever. So you can prompt the users for just the fields you need for your use case. 
and then users are presented with a estimate based on their internet connection, and then they are also see a, a blow by blow for each step throughout the process. So my website is probably the easiest place to get started with Set Up Your Mac. So let's review a handful of racing stripes. And I'm always amazed at how Mac admins are leveraging Set Up Your Mac for a variety of use cases. And here's just some racing stripes. And let's take a 10,000 foot overview of each. A big, big thanks to Rob for uh, integrating Set Up Your Mac with post enrollment. Show of hands, how many people are using Rob's approach? I'll put my hand down because we're not. He, uh, he's got a blog post that will detail everything about it. And he is frequently on the Mac admin Slack if you have questions and something goes sideways with your implementation. As a workaround for those of us who are hosted on-prem and can't yet use Jamf's built-in compliance features, at the church, when end users first log into self-service, they see two policies. One is to set up your Mac, the other is to update inventory. The successful completion of Set Up Your Mac results in what we call a Jamf Pro compliant device. And essentially what you're doing is that you are taking the built-in managed devices and replacing it when this advances. Kelly, are you able to is this me? Okay, so you're, you're effectively replacing the all managed clients with your own organization's definition of a Jamflow uh, compliant device. This is not trivial. I plan on writing a blog post about it. I'm here all week if you have any questions about it. So OB Rob also has a write-up on Zoom Rooms, which you may wish to check out using the displayed QR code. Now, uh, one of my favorite recent features of Set Up Your Mac is remote validations. So remote validations answer the question, I can see it's installed, is it running? So knowing this is critical when it comes to your business applications such as security software. So in a nutshell, the code of an existing extension attribute is saved as a script in your Jamf Pro server. And I guess I need to press and hold. So your extension attribute is saved as a script in your Jamf Pro server, and this script is then added to a simple Jamf Pro policy. This then is used in Set Up Your Mac as a remote validation. Uh, so Kelly, I don't know if Boom. So it's saved as a remote validation and it returns the keyword running. And I have a blog post that'll walk you through how to use remote validations. So if you have ever wanted to contribute to set up your Mac, remote validations are a great place to start. Currently we have remote validations for Microsoft Office, CrowdStrike Falcon, uh, Sophos Endpoint, 
We even have printers, if you're still using printers. <laughs> but what I, the only thing I learned from Ghostbusters is that print is dead. Okay. So as with most things that are easy for the end users, set up your Mac, this places the sometimes complex steps squarely on the shoulders of the GM Pro administrator. That said, a fair amount of time has been spent on documentation, so hopefully you shouldn't go too far astray too fast. But let's talk about a couple possible gotchas. So here are some gotchas of which you should be aware. If you observe something not working as expected, the first place to look at is your JSON. Okay, and I see heads nodding. Yes, that's the first place to look at as your, as your JSON. So the troubleshooting section of the Set Up Your Mac blog post includes step-by-step -step instructions on how to lynch your JSON. Okay, and then as I was preparing this presentation, I noticed that a single quote in a, uh, the progress text would throw off the rest of the script. So if you change it to a smart quote, that'll help you avoid that issue, and then it looks better as well. Okay, so your single quotes in your descriptions become smart quotes, and then you won't have a challenge there. And then there are a fair number of questions on the Mac admin Slack that could be answered by first visiting Bart's wiki. Okay, so if you'll check out the Swift Dialog wiki. Okay, so now for the best part of today's presentation. So one of the biggest challenges of getting started with Set Up Your Mac is converting this into this. Well, that challenge ends today. All right, so I have to confess, uh, when Dan first approached me, I wasn't too familiar, or maybe at all familiar, uh, with the work he's been doing. But fortunately, uh, if you've seen his blog, uh, going through that, a little bit of coaching, uh, got me up to speed. The initial ask, as he mentioned, maybe try to ease the process of creating all that JSON, uh, missed a comma, missed a closing bracket. Uh, it'd be nice if we could just pull everything in uh, since it's in JAMP and have some process to build that for us. So, as I mentioned, I've written a few apps, um, JAMP Migrator, CPR, few other jamf status um, thought it wouldn't be too difficult to build a helper for set up your Mac so let's get a little walk through and see how it goes there we go All right, familiar, you got to log in, need some credentials, read-only is probably going to be appropriate. Um, got several settings you can set right off the bat. You don't have to use Dan's script. You can set up your own. Uh, just point to it there in the settings. You can determine which dialogues you want to present to the user. Uh, it's easy to get buildings and departments, just a quick click. Again, this is all reading from Jamf Pro. If you have a lot of policies, it's fairly simple to limit what you see. You can quickly filter that. We're cheating a bit here. Um, if you have a script you've written before, uh, it's going to look a little bit like this. Um, we'll look at an example, sort of the catch-all configuration as we build that, just double-clicking. Items from the left column gets added to the configuration you want over on the right. A 
Validation was mentioned. We can add local validation. Again, just a quick click of the button, give it a name. So the progress text, if it's available, uh, it can be also pulled. Again, we're cheating a bit, uh, filling in some that might be missing. We're also grouping. Uh, if you've used the app before, uh, you're aware that you can have multiple processes going, but I'm only displaying sort of one title one bit of progress to the user. So those we can group together. Multiple triggers within that group as well. Notice that recon at the end. Uh, that's important to add. There it is. The local validation, just give it a name. Uh, recon, I guess kind of makes sense. So you can probably get the idea. The more information you can keep in Jamf Pro, self-service descriptions, icons, uh, the less you're going to have to manually enter into the setup here. Fairly easy to create additional um, configurations. You can quickly clone what we have, add more to it, remove items, generate the script. Let's give it a run and see how it goes. Fingers crossed. No kernel panics. <laughs> All right. Uh, note the asterisks indicate required fields. They're all the uh, buildings that we pulled in. That list you can also modify. If you don't want to show everything, you can pull different buildings, different departments out. Oh, we forgot a few things. And there it goes. I got a clap. So again, provide some feedback. We might be missing some items. And this is going into the script that the app created. I uh, just need to locate the bits of information there. It would be nice if there was never something missing, but maybe a goal to reach someday. And it's probably worth mentioning, uh, the failures that we're seeing are expected. Uh, the machine is not enrolled in Jamf. Um, so the intent was just to get an idea what it's going to look like. Uh, and things never always work, so it's nice to see that
right, so there it is. Again, creating a, another copy, select an existing copy. Drag the items around. You can change the order that things run. Double clicking items over on the uh, right hand column. I've got to remember which way I'm facing. Uh, we'll remove it from your uh, configuration that you're building. A few more changes, we'll give it another run. Mentioned earlier, we could decide uh, what fields to present to the user. Uh, maybe I don't need to prompt them for a username, some of that information, so we can just turn those fields off. <laughs> and I would also have to say again, thanks Bart for uh, swift dialogue. Uh, although I'd probably have a lot more free time maybe if it wasn't available. All right, so there it is. And Dan tells me he's going to have a blog up later. Dan, if you could maybe give us an idea when later. Later is right now. I just hit publish. I don't remember who I was talking to. They walked in and said, I just completed it last week. I'm like, my heart kind of sank. So if you have yet to use set up your Mac, you have impeccable timing. <laughs> impeccable timing. So uh, there's a, the most recent blog post on my blog. If you hit the forward oh. thing, we'll get the, oh, you already got up there. So I think that QR code takes you to the set up your Mac one, but the most recent post on my blog is Leslie's app. And it is, that was a, a movie of 069, I think 076. Six, yeah. So there's been some improvements that you will see. But, uh, and then you've, 503, we're crashing it! <laughs> I want to take a picture of that. If we hadn't <laughs> crashed it, it would have broken my heart. Steve, do you have questions? I thought you'd never ask. All right, so uh, before we get started with Q&A, I do want to apologize to those on the virtual feed. We did have some pretty bad technical issues that uh, got you guys in here late, so we do apologize for that. But let me jump into questions. Uh, first one, how do you set the icon for the app and set up your Mac helper? The icon for the app? Icon for the app. I can, I can answer that question. Answer away. Uh, so it's detailed on the blog post, but what Leslie is doing is grabbing the fields from the self-service tab of your policy, even if self-service is disabled for that policy. So there's a screencast and you'll see it but what you're going to do is the policies that you're using for enrollment, we have enrollment specific policies. If you decide you want to repurpose another policy, just make sure it has data populated in the self-service tab, okay? And then you can ignore what CDN you're using on JAMP side to grab your icons. Can we get an applause for that? And he just released an update today to fix that, right? <laughs> so to answer the question, so you go to your policy, your self-service tab, populate all those fields. If you go to the blog post, when you don't get a 503, you will um, see that, okay? All right. 
uh, how does set up your Mac compare to, to DEP notify? Um, I would have to ask somebody else. My only experience with DEP notify is from Graham with erase install. And then of course he has switched over to Swift Dialog. But I mean, who's gonna compare yourself with Mac Troll, right? <laughs> Um, the GitHub app is not public on the repo. When will that uh, set up your Mac helper app be published? It should be live. You made it live this morning. So the newest version will be live in less than half an hour. Dan has uh, an older version that's available now. Yeah, so if you don't get a 503 on my website, which is the first time I've been happy to get that error. <laughs> um, so it's... If you go to, so you're big, you're big dash rat. Correct. And if you go to github.com forward slash big. Uh, big rat dash. Big rat, big, big, big dash rat. rat. <laughs> you'll see it, he's got a repo for SYM dash helper. And he's, you've got one release there. Correct. Which I think is the same as what I have. Yeah. But Seven, six. Yeah. yeah, I don't think we're going to break GitHub. We might break my little hosting. Uh, I'm enrolling via automated device enrollment. Is there a zero touch set up your Mac with no user input? Yes, you would just disable the fields that you don't want. So whatever, whatever fields you saw up there, I don't, you don't want those fields. If you don't want to prompt, you can turn the welcome screen off. You can just set it to false and immediately go there. Can I ask a question? Is that allowed? Absolutely. Okay, can you hit the... Flicker? Maybe. Maybe. So here's my question. Oops, we need to go back one. So it clicked and it finally went. Uh, my question is what's on the roadmap for Set Up Your Mac 2.0? Was that one of these questions? No, unfortunately, it wasn't. Okay. So I, I could write it in if you want me to. All right, so I can send this. When I first, so the, the first versions were based on Adam's code, and then it was based on James's code. And then it has evolved, obviously. <laughs> I had no idea how you guys were going to use it. We made it for our use. And there's a lot of features that we code that we'll never use at the church. But I'm glad that other people can use them. So now I feel like we're far enough down the path that I have a good idea of how you guys are using it. So it's probably time to refactor. And I thought to myself, what if we had a processor? What if in the JSON there was a processor? What if Jamf was one of those processors? That's what we have today. What if Installimator was a processor? What if you didn't even need to make a policy in Jamf Pro because there was already an Installimator label that you wanted to leverage? Right? That, oh, that would work. And then what if you had a uh, execution mode? Currently, we're doing self-service. A lot of you are doing a pre-stage. What if... Bart had Swift Dialog work during Setup Assistant or at the login window. So what if you had like an execution mode? You could say, I want this to execute during Setup Assistant. I have no idea if that's possible. But I've, that's kind of what's on the roadmap for 2.0. Okay? You have other questions? Yeah, actually, the top voted right now is what's on the roadmap for Setup Your Mac 2.0. <laughs> It's very good. Thanks to whoever put that in. Thanks for whoever put that in. Uh, I'm presently trying to leverage set up your Mac. Hold on, this one went a little long. Uh, after enrollment is completed to deploy needed applications, the problem I'm having is removing the code for the intake form. Could you please show that portion? Yeah, so if by the intake form, I call that the welcome dialog. You should just be able to make that false. So you're not prompting for any user input. Just make it false, and it should go straight to the main set up your Mac screen. Okay. Uh, if you elect not to have user provide a username, where would that be pulled from? So we don't prompt users for usernames. We are hosted on-prem. We use uh, the Kerberos single sign-on extension, and we associate people 
with that. And we've got an AD connection in Jamf Pro. So post-enrollment, that I don't think I ever show on a screencast, people are prompted to log into the Kerbero single sign-on extension, and then we know who they are based upon their AD credentials. So I, I don't know, did I answer that question, Steve? How would you, if you weren't on-prem and you didn't have Kerbero single sign-on? You would contact your rock star, Champ <laughs> SE, and say, here's my use case. How do I achieve it? Good plug. Good plug. Uh, can you save your workflows you create in the helper app and then edit them later? Yes. Uh, this saves the, the script itself, and there's also a small config file that uh, preserves what policies are in each of the different configs. Next time you open the app, it'll bring in those uh, saved configurations. Yeah, so that's, and that's detailed in the blog post as well. Dan doesn't miss much in his, in his blog post. <laughs> Except for the 500 errors. Except for the 500 errors. Is it errors. still down, by the way? Snelson.us is up, all right. So this room crashed your server. That's, That's pretty sweet. good. That's nice. Maybe I'll get like a free month of hosting from my host. <laughs> All right, last one. I, we may have answered this one already because I think we did. Uh, does helper add icon images to the build list? And another one just came in, so. Okay, another one. Uh, Set up your Mac Helper, pulls data from Jamf Pro. Populate the self-service tab of your policy, okay? So just as you're normal in the GUI, make sure you've got an icon in that, and then turn off self-service. All those fields are there, Leslie's gonna grab them. And you no longer have to worry about where they're hosted. And you never have to do the voodoo to harvest your self-service icons. All right, last one. If you set the welcome screen to false, does set up your Mac wait until the user is logged in to kick off, or is it running during the login screen, or some of it running during the login screen? It depends. So for us, let's say we did not prompt the user for asset tag. We're executing via self-service. So they log in and they launch self-service. If you're going with Rob's approach, it's going to go as part of a pre-stage enrollment and it will kick off and it will just start. And there, you're not prompting the user for anything, it's just gonna start. I could like, in a lab, I could see you know, doing that for a lab. Okay. Are we able to take questions from this audience if they didn't wanna use the app? Uh, no. No. Okay, Sorry. you don't wanna use, use the app. Use the app. This is Steve we're talking about, you've got one. Um, we well, and we've had more come in, so okay, right I'm not going to say last question because you okay, guys just keep going. Okay, the next question. The next question: uh, Can you add parallel downloads with something like Installimator or Direct URL calls, so you have apps downloading and installing in parallel to the 2.0 roadmap? That is cool. Can you, whoever put that, can you hit a, a feature request and on GitHub and that's cool. So you do concurrent. Concurrent download. Okay. Uh, how does set up your Mac differ from the Jamf processes for software installs that was presented this morning? I, that was the first I saw it. My current understanding is that that's Jamf only apps, right? Yes. I went like this. <laughs> so I don't know. <clears throat> Ultimately though, Jamf needs to build something like set up your Mac themselves, correct? Ultimately, right? Because your, your competitors have it. So we're talking about the onboarding, right? Yes. Okay, sorry. My brain went somewhere else with that one. Uh, I can speak real quick to it. There will be an onboarding section within the Jamf Pro settings where you'll be able to set policies and stuff like that to choose which app. So it's not just Jamf apps. It's, oh, cool. It can be anything. And, but that is initiated through self-service? It is, yes. Okay, so there's your difference, right? If you use Rob's approach and go with the pre-stage enrollment, which I think is most of us want to do, right? So, right. okay, maybe there's room for all of us. Maybe it's Jamf and. It is Jamf and. <laughs> all right, other, well, with that, uh, well, one just came in. Does Setup Your Mac monitor other processes like VPN, Zscaler, Etc. in the provisioning process. Yes, that is remote validation. So I wonder if somebody who's a, one of my friends asked that question. Yeah, that's, remote, that's what remote validations are. 
So if you have, and I used the example of an extension attribute, but let's say you have an EA that you're using to validate that your security software is healthy. You're gonna take that EA, turn it into a script, put it as a script in Jamf Pro, add that as a single script to your policy, and that is a remote validation. Because previously we would just say, hey, is our security software installed, right? Is its info P list client side? Yes. That doesn't mean it's running, right? That's what your EA does. So just put your EA into a script and do it that way. All right. Can I make another comment? You sure can. We'll wait for another question. You have a mic. Oh, I do have a mic. Well, they, Kelly can cut it off. <laughs> um, I added a brain date for tomorrow, and I think there's one spot left. So if you, so there's like Someone just five said it's of them. So if you wanted to get on, in on a brain date, please come see me individually, okay? And I, did I delay long enough? You, you did. Okay. I got two more. Two more. Uh, will it monitor Jamf, Jamf app installers? Um, there's a feature request already for Jamf app installers, and the answer currently is we want to, but it's not yet. So there's already a feature request for that. If you want to search for that and add your use case to it, that will help. Do you know anything about Jamf Connect Notify? And if you have Jamf Connect, uh, which replaces DEP Notify and can be used for ADE? I do not, but there's lots of people in the Mac admin Slack set up your Mac channel that are Jamf Connect customers. We are not. And if that's a specific question, I'd suggest, I would encourage you uh, to open support case or reach out to success, and they can help you with setting that up. That's good. Did, I, did both of us delay long enough? I think we did. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, thank for you. showing up. Thanks. Thank you, Dan thank and Leslie. Thank you. All right, Dan. <laughs>